America is not a racist country. As each day goes by, you know, for this hate crime hearing, it just gets worse and worse for these men that will be living the rest of their lives behind bars. And it's not hard to see how they ended up in this situation when you start listening to different witnesses coming out with what they have done to them. So Travis McMichael was in the U.S. Coast Guard and there was a subordinate under him a white woman, and she indicated that she dated uh, an NBA basketball player, but he wasn't in the NBA back then. They were in high school together, and she dated him. Well, listen to what happened when he found this out. All right. A woman, Travis McMichael, supervised during his time in the U.S. Coast Guard, broke down on the witness stand Friday as she told the jury he repeatedly insulted her when he discovered she previously dated a Black man, Christy Ronquell, who the U.S. Coast Guard said she was stationed with McMichael in Pascagoula, Mississippi in 2011. McMichael outranked her at the time, but the two had friends in common and saw each other in social settings on several occasions. Ron Quell, the Kentucky native, broke down as she told jurors about a time she was insulted by McMichael's after turning on an NBA game and recognizing a player she had dated in high school. The player, she said, was black. Travis said disparaging things after learning of her dating history. She testified and began calling her an inward lover, she alleged. It took me back. I felt disrespected, Ronquell said. All right, so uh, the U.S. assistant U.S. Tara Lyons attorney uh, was asking her, okay, well, why didn't you report this? Ron Quell said had she had only finished basic training at the time, referring to herself as still green. She also said she worried because McMichael was her supervisor. It was the first time I'd ever heard remarks used like that, she said. Ron Quell said that McMichael called her that multiple times after learning of her dating history. Amy Lee Copeland, McMichael's attorney, said during a previous interview with the FBI, Ron Quell told the agents that she was only 90% sure he called her that. Copeland was unable to play the audio of the interview in court, however, and uh, did not have a transcri- uh, transcript of the conversation to present as evidence before lunch. Prosecution called several witnesses Friday morning and is expected to rest its case in the hate crime charge of McMichael, his father, and their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan. Kim Bellestros, who lived across the street from the McMichaels for nearly a year, testified that Greg McMichael once said disparaging things about a black woman who rented a home from them. She recalled a conversation the two once had about rental properties in which Greg McMichael allegedly said insulting things about the black tenant who was behind on her rent. McMichael described the tenant as a fat black woman and said they often referred to her as the walrus. 
Okay. Did he tell you why Lyons was asking? Because she was big and black, the woman replied, noting the conversation made her feel uncomfortable. She also testified that McMichael told her uh, he disconnected the woman's air conditioning during the summer in an attempt to get her to pay on time. You should have seen how fast her big black ass, this is what he said, came with the rent check. Greg McMichael told her the former neighbor testified. I was surprised. Balestro said on the witness stand, it was racist and uncomfortable, and I was quite frankly disappointed. On cross-examination, Greg McMichael's attorney, A.J. Balbo, noted that his client wasn't opposed to renting to Black people. It is your testimony that Greg McMichael rented property to people of color, he was asking. So the McMichael and Brian were convicted of Ahmaud Arbery's murder last fall in a state court and they're sentenced to life in prison. The three men are now on trial in federal court accused of, uh, you know, they interfered with Ahmaud Arbery's right to use a public street and because he was black. They are also charged in attempted kidnapping and the McMichaels face weapon charges for their role in the chase and shooting. So there you go. That's what came out the last time they were in court this past Friday. I mean, it just seems to me like it is it's very clear they're not going to beat these hate crime charges for real. They're not going to beat these charges, y'all. And it just seems like Greg McMichael, his father, and Brian, they were obsessive in their racism. They got consumed by it. And it's like every day, they already brought out every day of their life, they were using the N-word multiple times. So they let their racism completely consume them to the point where they landed in jail over it. Just imagine if they would have just lived their life and worry less about black people, they wouldn't be sitting in there today. But that's on them. Hey, <laughs> you made your bed, so now lay in it. I don't feel anything for these three men. But y'all, please tell me what you think about what came out in court on the 18th of February. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.